Why is simply creating a business continuity plan or a crisis management or incident management plan or updating your existing plan, why is that not the right place to start? Well, let me explain in this brief video where I talk about our view here at BrightPath of what is resilience. In our mind, organizational resilience is a multifaceted beast. It's made up of a number of different parts, all of which must be aligned over time to really ensure that your organization is positioned to against those kind of systematic, systematic disruptions that we see today. We see disruptions from geopolitical risk to violent attacks to economic issues to ransomware and cyber extortion attacks, insider threats, and the list just goes on and on and on. And tomorrow will bring us even more challenges. So we think about organizational resilience kind of being in the center of a traditional hub and spoke approach where you've got a number of things kind of circling that center sun. That sun is about building organizational resilience. It starts with having tactical things in place, like what are your life safety and emergency procedures? If I'm a line manager or a worker in a manufacturing plant, for example, and there's a fire, what do I do? What are the documented procedures, the flip chart or, or, or app I go to that tells me what to do? What it, then how does it escalate within the organization? So we start with those life safety and emergency procedures. It includes business continuity planning. What are your critical business functions in your organization? What is the impact of a disruption to those functions and capabilities? What do those functions and capabilities depend upon? What technology applications, what physical sites if those are necessary, what third-party service providers or vendors, what key personnel, what other uh, resources are important or raw materials are important for them to work with. When there is a crisis, how do you manage that at an enterprise scale? And that's your crisis or emergency management program. The activation of a business continuity plan, for example, we would typically think of as a crisis that needs to be managed and led and coordinated centrally while the business team is working on their workarounds to maintain continuity of operations or they're executing a full-blown uh, relocation from a primary manufacturing site to a secondary manufacturing site. Then we get into the other important elements of a program that often get overlooked. The first is your, um, your information technology availability and disaster recovery capabilities. So for your critical technology capabilities, we want those to be able to um, withstand a shock, a disruption. So they should be architected in a way that is highly available. Maybe that's multi-data center. Maybe it's putting it in the cloud and having multiple availability zones and regions. The real answer will depend on your circumstances. And when your back is really against the wall and that high availability strategy doesn't work, well, then what are your backups? And can you restore from those backups to recover those critical technology capabilities? This also goes into your enterprise risk management approach. What are those key enterprise scale risks to your organization and how do you mitigate or plan against those risks and then of course we have the two core security domains how do we physically protect our property and our ability to investigate or prevent disruption to that and how do we protect our information our intellectual property assets our critical technologies um, how do we you know protect that both from an insider threat or from an outside actor a hacker or a cyber extortion group that wants to impact your organization or extract critical data even health data or your intellectual property or just extort you for money and threaten to expose you in that way. We think of all of those things as a part of an effective resilience strategy. And then not to leave out, but when things go south, then you have the crisis communications aspect of this too. How do you protect your organization's reputation? And sometimes your reputational crisis is the crisis. Maybe you've had uh, an incident of executive malfeasance. Maybe you've made a misstep in one of your local communities and now you're confronted with a protest or a reputational campaign or even deliberate sabotage that's targeted at your organization. So all of those areas, the eight of them that I spoke through, really make up a holistic resilience strategy. And you may be strong in some of these areas, you may be weak in some of these areas. That's all part of understanding and evaluating where you stand and being able to move that strategy forward to truly ensure 
your organization is resilient against disruption. Learn more about our approach to um, resilience and the various practice domains of business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications on our website at brightpath.com. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.